Welcome to another video on Playing Bones, the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the basic rules of dominoes. The basic rules. Uh, this is another question that I've been getting a lot of recently, and that's people wanting to just understand the rules for beginners. So to get us started, we're going to just jump head on into it and explain some of the basic rules. Uh, and I'm also going to be showing you examples of these rules so you can see them in action and know how they apply. Again, if you're new here, my name is DJ and welcome to Playing Bones. If you want to get better at playing dominoes, this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button so you can be up to date on each time I release a new video. And at the end of this particular video, I'm going to be showing you the number one rule you never want to break. So let's get into the video. What are the basic rules? So if you want to start playing the game, you want to have this set of dominoes. You want a big six set of 28. You don't want double nine. You don't want double 12. Uh, any of that stuff, you won't be playing this game of all fives. So once you have your double set, double six set of professional dominoes, you're going to want to lay all of the dominoes out. Once all the bones are laid out, you want to make sure that they're all flipped face down, of course, and you want to shuffle the dominoes. This shuffling process right there is called washing dishes. I refer to our domino slaying video uh, to get more terms and words that people use in the game to describe certain actions. Now, once the dominoes are fully shaken, the dishes are washed, each player is gonna draw seven dominoes. So let's say we're in a game of three players. We're playing cutthroat, another term that you're gonna wanna want to know. Each player is gonna pull seven. So seven. Seven. And seven. The remaining dominoes are then put into the bone yard, which is oftentimes pushed to the side. So you got the hands of three players here represented, and then the extra dominoes that no one is using is the bone yard. Now the goal of the game is to use up all your dominoes first before everyone else does, and at the same time, you want to be conscious of scoring points and reaching your target score. And this is why the game of all fives is really the best one, in my opinion. Because instead of just blocking people or making people draw, you're doing all those things, but then you're also scoring. So it adds just an extra layer of depth to the game and really makes it more of a game that's like chess and not checkers. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button and subscribe. Also turn on notifications so you'll know every time I drop a video. Now the first thing that we're going to get into is what domino plays first. So we got three people who are in this game, but what domino is going to play first? Well, double six or the largest domino would always play first. So if I flip the hand over here for player one, you'll see that double six is not in this hand. Now, if we flip the hand over for player two over here, double six is not in that hand either. And if we flip the hand over for player three, double six is in that hand. Double six, when I say that, is this domino, the domino that just has six on it twice, double six. In a brand new game like we're looking at here, double six always will play first because it's the largest double. Now, if no one had double six, then we would default to the player who has double five because it is the next largest double. If double five wasn't there, it would be double four, which no one has in this instance. 
So then it would be double three would be the domino to lead. So I hope you get that first basic rule, which is who plays first. It's the player with the largest double. And in this case, it will be player three here who has double six. Now the person who plays first, this is called the domino man, the lead dog, a lot of different ways to call it, but this person is the one who plays first and really is in control of the game until they pass or are made to go into the boneyard. Now, a very uh, rule that confuses many people is that when this hand is over, we play this hand out, we go into a new hand. What domino is played then to start the next hand? Let's say player three here goes out in dominoes. They play their last domino before everybody else does. And now we reshake and we redraw. What domino does player three then play in the new hand? Well, in that case, they can play any domino they want because they are then really in control because they, they have successfully played all their dominoes after that first hand. So other than the very first hand of the game, you can play any domino you like. In that, but in that first hand, you have to start with the largest double. So now let's say this player plays first. Who then goes next? Well, the game of dominoes always goes, goes clockwise, not counterclockwise. So clockwise fashion. So if player three plays first here, then player this player is going to go, then this player, and then this player will go again. So it always goes in a clockwise fashion. Now, how are points scored? How are points scored? Well, I'm going to give you a demonstration here of how points are scored in this game. So let's say that just like we discussed, this player is going to play first with double six. Now, this player here that I'm sitting in front of, once double six is played, I can't play. So I'm giving you an accurate demonstration of the boneyard immediately. I have no sixes in this hand, so I have to go to the boneyard and draw dominoes until I can play. Okay, I found a play finally after drawing two. So I'm playing six, two in that instance. Now, how are points scored? This player now is going to get the first score of the game. They're going to play two, three here, and they score 15 points, which is an excellent hit. Now, how did they score 15 points? If we look at the hand here, we see six and six is 12. Plus three is 15. So in the game of all fives, we only count the ends. Nothing in here matters in the middle. Only what's showing on the ends of the board. So 15 points. So now that this player is back up, let's say they play the 6-5 here on this end. Now, how can this player here score again? I'll give you another, another demonstration of scoring. 6-2 here equals 5 points. Now, do you see how that is? We're counting the ends. 3 and 2 is 5. Now, the number one rule in scoring is that you only score in multiples of 5. So it has to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. That's how you can score in the game. So now that that five points has been taken, we're going to ramp it up and we're going to use the spinner. Now the spinner is the first domino that is laid sideways or the first domino that is a double that is played. That is the spinner. Now the spinner is the only domino that can be played on off the middle that's not on the ends. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. So now that this has been played, the spinner the spinner can be played on now. So 6-3 is played on there. So now this is no score because it's 3, 6, plus 2 is 8. Now, just to um, emphasize how we can score with, uh, with counting the spinner, let's go ahead and put this 3-5 here. And now that's going to equal 10 points. You see now we're counting the ends this way. 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. 
10 points. Now, this player can now play the blank five and count five. Blank, three, two, five points. So here are the blanks. This is another very common question. What do blank dominoes mean in, mean in the game? They don't mean anything. Blank dominoes have no value. So with this blank up here, this means zero, three, two is five points. Now this player here can now, oh no, this player just played. So we're, we're moving all over here to this side. So we're gonna continue to build off of the spinner. So now we're gonna put the six, four there in that spot. And now we're counting the ends now, but all ends have been used. So blank, four, two, and three. So this is nine points on the board. Now this player can now build on this and count 15. You see that? Six, four, 10, plus two and three, 15. So this is kind of the basic layout of how you can score in multiples of five. Now, here is an interesting um, point or question that often comes up. Let's say once this 10 is scored here, um, let's say you can't play. Let's say as this player's, as this hand is played out, player one is now, or player three is now about to dominate. So what happens in this point once, once a player uses all of their dominoes? Well, what happens is the other players gather their remaining dominoes together and those points are counted towards this player's points total. So these are the dominoes that are left here. These are counted up. So this is a total of 10, 19, 20, 21, 22. So this is 22. So how many points would this player get? Would they get 20 or would they get 25? These dominoes here are gonna be rounded down to 20. If it was 23 or more, then they would round up to 25. But since it's only 22 here, they're gonna round these points down to 20. The dominoes are rounded down. Then the players are gonna wash the dishes again and then another hand will start, a new hand, hand number two. All players are then going to draw their seven dominoes just like we did in the beginning of the game. Oh, one rule, another rule to take note of is the person who dominoed or the person who used their last dominoes first always has priority to touch the dominoes first once they're reshaken. So if this player over here domino, they are the first person to touch the domino, show them that respect. But once they touch them, then all players can then draw their seven. And then remember the leftover dominoes are placed into the bone yard, which will be used later for players who cannot play. So we'll turn over these hands again. Now remember, since this player domino, they get the option to play whatever domino they want to play first to get the game started. Now, how long does the game go? The game goes until you guys reach your agreed upon target score. So for most players, we play to 150. Now, if you play online a lot and you play fly clops, blitz especially, you're used to playing to 100, but that is very short and nobody plays to 100 in real life. Players will typically play again to 150. Some players play to 200 or 250, but if you got a house full of guys and or gals and everybody's playing dominoes, nobody's trying to wait for you to play to 200 or 250. So typically games go to 150.
Now remember, in that start of a new hand, the player who domino can play whatever they want to play. So in this instance, this player would play the 3-2 and they would count five points because they could play whatever it is that they want to play. What are some key takeaways from this video that we want to always remember? Um, one thing that we highlighted was the spinner. The spinner is very important. Remember, the spinner is the first double domino that's laid down. And remember, that is the only domino that can be played off of the sides. Other than that, let's say the double six is played first and then later on a double four is played. The double six is the one that is considered the spinner. Now, another rule is uh, one that's out there that people argue about all the time. And that's how many points do you need to get on the board? Some people say you need 10 to get on or you need 15 to get on. Nah, I don't play that way. I never have played that way. And most people who you play with, the OGs, they don't play that way. Any score will get you on the board uh, generally. So it can be 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever it is. But a five count will get you on the board. Oh, remember, I said I was going to give you the number one rule to never break in the game of dominoes. And I'm going to hold on to my promise. So let's say this domino was played and um, let's say this domino is played next here. And then this domino is played here. And then all of a sudden this domino gets played right here. And then I play on it here. And then all of a sudden this player plays over here. And then now this player plays over here. And the game, oh, better yet, this player plays here. And they say, 10. What's wrong with this picture when you're looking at this screen right here? What is wrong with this picture? They counted 10. And while they're right, it is 10 points here. But something's not adding up because somebody played a three on a one. And what we call this is bogus. You go, oh, hold up, hold up. That is 10, but it's a three on a one here. That's bogus. What happens when somebody plays bogus? Well, first of all, when you're playing dominoes, you never want to play a bogus play. Depending on who you play with, this means an automatic game over, you lose. However, in a game like this, where there's three people playing, Who's going to be the winner? If this was one-on-one -on -one and someone played bogus like this, automatic game over, they lost. Or if it's a game of partners, automatic game over. Whatever team played bogus, they lost. But in a cutthroat game like this where there are three players involved, what happens when you break the number one rule you don't break and play bogus? Well, in this case, many people will get 50 points to the person who found the bogus play. So you go, oh man, that's 50 points. And then everybody would flip the hands over and start a new hand. But in some instances, once you play bogus, the whole game is destroyed. Everybody needs to just start the game from scratch, start from the beginning. And whoever played bogus, man, we're going to look at you sideways because what do you not know how to play? Do you not know how the rules? You cannot play bogus. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Domino Rules Part 1. I'm going to get into a lot more um, kind of more detailed things, other things to look for. Uh, but these are the basic rules to dominoes, and they should be able to get you off to a good start playing the game and enjoying the game. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more Domino content.